This is On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. A weekly recap of your Philadelphia Flyers from blue line to blue line. Broadcasting live from Chickies and Pete's, tonight's show is brought to you by Pan and Stone Spa, Pat Dion Beverages, The Capitol Grill, Chickies and Pete's, Payroll Service Solutions, and Independence Blue Cross. We now go live to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Now, here are your hosts, former Flyer Brad Marsh and Paul Jolovitz. And thank you very much, Matt Miro. Welcome, everybody, to Chickies and Pete's in beautiful Glassboro, New Jersey. It's bustling on a pre-Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year to everybody out there. I'm Paul Jolovitz. This is On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Brad Marsh is with us as our co-host. Happy holidays, Brad. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Get ready for the festivities. Get ready for the festivities is right. And for the festivities, you always bring out a heavy hitter, which is who we brought out tonight. The ambassador of the Philadelphia Flyers, Broad Street Bully, two-time Stanley Cup champion. Forgot to ask him before the show. He's wearing one of the rings. I want to know which Uh one. (laughs) <laughs> Mr. Bob the Hound Kelly. Bob, how are you? Good, man. Thanks for having me out here, and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas as well, too, and have a happy holidays. Very nice. I, I've, I've wondered to this point, ever since I've been in Philadelphia, I've never asked you, I've never asked anybody else, I have no idea why. How'd you get the nickname the Hound? Well, when I first made the team, I ran over Joe Watson. That's what, that's what, <laughs> got, me, that's what got me on the Flyers. So, uh, Joe said, Christ, he plays like a mad dog out here. So for the first year, it was called Mad Dog. And I go, it looks like I'm going to stick. They're not going to get rid of me for a while. So I said, we've got to change and soften the name up a little bit. So they come up with Hound. So I'll take the Hound anytime. There we are. Wasn't there another uh, Bob Kelly, Mad Dog? They called it another no, Mad he was, Dog Kelly? No, he was Battleship. Battleship, Battleship? Kelly. I thought there was another <laughs> Mad Dog. And then our guys used to really get pissed off because he'd say, hey, rowboat, come here. And I go, no, somebody's going to have to go out and fight that guy. And he's a tough kid, let me tell you that. That's interesting with the Broad Street Bullies. Brad, you knew how to use your hands. Bob, you were kind of that, you were certainly not a goon, um, but you could fight. The Broad Street Bullies had guys who fought, guys who played, guys who did both. You were a guy who did both. How much pride did you take in being a hockey player and a guy who could use your fists? Whatever it took on the ice, you could do. Well, <clears throat> Schultz used to fight like Ben Wilson, just to see who's tougher, who's going to win, and get all the accolades and that. I really only fought guys that would uh, cheap shot our guys or butt in or crush them or something like that, you know, unsuspecting checks along the boards. That's the only time I didn't, I didn't fight for the glory of fighting. I mean, I, I can fight. I grew up fighting. I was a kid on the street, so. All right, Ben Wilson or Schultz, who would you take in a best of seven? Whew. I'll tell you what, Ben Wilson had some good fights with uh, the big kid who played in Washington. Uh, name escapes me. Gordy there. Lane? No, no, he was an Islander. No, not Rod Langway. No, higher no, up. Higher Rod up. never fought a no. day in his life. I didn't think big he did. Big kid there. I, I, I just, name just skips me, but uh, I'll, I'll take Ben Wilson any day. All right, Brad, uh, what, what was fighting a part of your game? I mean, you, you were a very good defenseman for a long time, a captain in the NHL, but you used your fist sometimes. You got a fight or two that stick out over all the others? Well, I fought a lot in junior. Um, I fought a lot my first couple years in the league, and then... Uh, at some point in time, uh, you make the decision um, whether you want to sit for five minutes in the penalty box or you want to play the game of hockey. And so I think a lot of times it's you, you're earning your stripes when you come into the league. Uh, my first fight, my first NHL fight was against Mel Bridgman, uh, who uh, I was later traded for. And, uh, uh, and a funny story there, um, he ended up being the general manager for the Ottawa Senators my last year in the NHL. So kind of the whole Mel Bridgman story came full circle. But, uh, um, you know, back when we played, huh, like everybody could fight. Some fought more, some fought a little better, but everyone could look after themselves. And you had to look after yourselves, you know, because uh, that's just how the game was played back then. Well, All right. I had, I had a, <clears throat> sorry, I had an interesting one, my first fight. Uh, when I went to training camp, we played back in my hometown of Oshawa there, and uh, we, were, we were playing against... I'm just from Oakville. What's that? Your list is from Oakville. Well, I know that, but I said I played junior hockey in Oshawa. Oh, junior, okay. So I'm, we're playing the Oakland Seals. I'm sitting behind Larry Hillman, Wayne Hillman. Wayne Hillman sitting beside me, and he goes, Hey, kid, you want to make the team? I go, Yeah, yeah, what do I do? What do I do? And he says, Next time out, go get that guy with the mustache back in the fence and give it to him. I said, Oh, sounds good to me. So let me go. So I go out there, get in a fight with him. I did okay. I didn't get killed. I did okay. I come back. It was Carl Vadney. 
who led the league in, <laughs> led the league in penalties the year before that. Yep. I never forget it. And it's like, were you, was he testing me to see if I could fight, or was he testing me to see if I would go challenge somebody? I didn't know who the hell Carl Batty well, was. Never know. Back Especially in the day, with a name like Carol, you thought he was going to be right. a pushover. C A R O L too. Yeah. yeah. The thing Pretty with Carol Vadne, like, yep. like he could play. He was a good defenseman. He was a Bruins for a long time. Yeah, he was tough, but he was also a very, very good defenseman. Yeah. And Bob Kelly was a very good player. If, if uh, Jeopardy ever had a category of Stanley Cup winning goals, they might see the clue. Eleven seconds into the third period in Buffalo, Game Six, the '75 Finals, this Broad Street bully scored the Cup winning goal. Who was Bob Kelly would be the answer to that question, wouldn't it? Uh, so far, but you know what? So far, is it going to change? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. But, you know, it's not about my goal. It's about how the team did as a group and how we, everybody chipped in. So my goal was just one of uh, the goals that we used all the way along. So it was all good. All right, well, well, the thing is, is back to the, uh, how, you know, he, he kind of downplays the goal. I love showing the goal in, uh, in various things that we do because... Uh, if you back up, yes, it was 11 seconds in, but the Flyers win the draw, the Flyers dump it in. And in hockey, even though the game's changed, this hasn't changed. You have to be first on the puck. Right. And you have to be aggressive on the puck. And so Hound was first on the puck. And so not only was he first on the puck, he knocked uh, King Kong Korab off King the puck. Crab. King Yeah, number four <laughs> for Buffalo Sabre. Big, big, tough defenseman. Knocked him off the puck and came out and scored. So it was way more than just Hound being in the right place at the right time and happened to score a goal. He made the goal happen. Yep, the hard work oh. to do it. And that, that's what we're going to get to next, both of you guys, either one. You always hear, we hear in basketball, Joel Embiid, NBA guys, politicking for the MVP. I should have won this. I should have won that. Jalen Hurts hasn't politicked at all. Potentially the MVP of the NFL, Bryce Harper in Major League Baseball. Hockey... You just you talked about Bob. You, you scored a Stanley Cup winning goal, which not many people can say. But you're talking about how the team, how your piece of it, wasn't that relevant to the big team picture. You talk like that all the time, Brad. To me, that's very admirable to not take individual credit and, and ascribe it to the team in a team sport. How much does that attitude matter? Either one of you guys. Over to you, Bob. Back to you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> well, from my perspective, it, 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 it's still, like I said, it's one goal. We got there. We, we got there because it was a team effort all the way through. We battled the ups and down. You know, we lost a couple in a row in that. It was just a constant battle. That Everybody in that locker room had the same goal, which was to show up, play your best, and play for the winning for the team. I mean, that we play for what's on the front, not on the back. Well, the thing is, is you look at any successful team, and we're talking hockey, so we'll talk hockey. Um, when a team is successful, they don't care who scores the goal. They don't care who is the star of the game. They don't care who gets the, he the headlines and so on and so on. They made that happen as the Philadelphia Flyers. It was not one individual. Yes, some get a little more publicity than sure. others. But Bob Clark and Bernie Perron were, were just as happy for Bob Kelly to score that goal than anybody else. Well, the question, I guess, that comes from that then is the NBA has a culture of Obviously, you want your team to win, but there's a little more of an individual culture in the NBA. Tobias Harris the other night after a game, I'm a great shooter. Nobody works as hard as me. I've been in 30 million NHL locker rooms, never heard that once. Could that kind of culture survive on an NHL team? If you came in and were individually oriented, how would you be in a locker room, Bob? Whoever you are, wherever you were in the NHL. Uh, I don't think... We're only into, I think, to guys who, like, Keith Allen would only bring in guys who, who fit in, bond in well, want to support each other, show up every time, work hard in practice. I mean, all the things that, that you're hired to do, you're paid to do. And, and guys who f fragment, fragment the, the team and stuff like that, I mean, it's a distraction. It doesn't help the team. You've got to be united to go out there and do something, and you've you got to have your heart in working for the whole team. Like, when we used to go, and we were a little bit crazy with our team, but... Wherever we would fly into, the first thing, hey guys, go drop your stuff off. We're all heading to the bar, we're putting up 20 chairs. Be there, put in a half hour, hang with the guys, with the guys who don't drink or what, which is fine, no big deal. And then you can take off and go and eat and stuff like that. But when we arrive in a town, we're all getting there together. And if, if uh, the players got into a, went into a bar and uh, Fred Sherrill wasn't in there. We could say if Freddie tried to get in the bar, he had to buy a round and leave, and vice versa. If we walk into a bar and Freddie's just sitting there, we buy him around, we leave, and we'll find a different bar. So. That, see, that's great stuff to me, the culture of sports and 
everything that goes with it. Brad, without naming names, obviously you wouldn't want to do that. Did you ever play with anybody you went around the NHL, play with a bunch of different teams? Did you ever play with anybody who you thought was in for it, in it for his own stats and, and glory? And I'm not saying didn't care about the team, but primarily an individual? Oh, for sure. And they get weeded out pretty quick, especially on a good team, as we've said a couple of times. The, the players will figure it out. And the one thing, uh, you know, when, when Han was talking and you, you asked the question, the one thing that the world of analytics does not measure is, is character, heart. And I don't care what the stats are. If you put him in the dressing room and he's a flake, he, he's going to do more harm than good. And I don't think there's enough emphasis. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm not close to the hockey side or the sports side of any professional sports. But back when we played, the most, most important guy in any transaction, draft, trade, was the trainer. How does he treat people? How is he in the dressing room? He, he asked these questions. Then the, the old bird dog scouts, that's what they did. <laughs> they sniffed around the old hockey rink and found out the character of the kid that they were going to draft or found out the player, uh, the character of the, of the player they're going to trade for. You guys both play with Sudsy Settlemeyer in Philadelphia who <coughs> filled that role as well as many others. How important was Sudsy, Bob? Uh, Sudsy, Sudsy came, uh, he came after I had left. Oh, he did? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, he came down from Maine up there. I had uh, old Salty Sea Dog and, uh, <laughs> and Warren Elliott. Not Sudsy, but Salty, huh? Salty. Salty Sea Dog, yeah. How you want your skate sharpened? Well, that's not bad. Try, try and give them a little more level. <laughs> well, the trainer is, is, is the glue. It's like you the mean, barber shop, like yeah. the barber, huh? What's that? Like the barber shop, the where you go to, to get your psychiatry is the barber shop. Oh, I got you. trainer on a hockey team. Yeah. I got you. No, but the trainer sees that he, he interacts with everybody, and he has to be in good spirits with everybody because there's a lot of players that want this, they want this, they want this, they want this. So the, the trainer is is the glue in the dressing room. Interesting. Bob, Bob told me a story before you got here, Brad, tonight about, and you don't have to tell this whole story again, it's interesting, but how you were invited to the White House uh, to a, a luncheon with Ronald and Nancy Reagan back in the 80s, which is tremendous, an awesome story. You're welcome to tell it if you want to, but that, the question was, you may not have been president, but you are an ambassador for the Philadelphia Flyers based on your White House and plenty of other experience. Tell everybody, because I've gotten this question before with you and other people. What does a team ambassador do? Obviously, I know part of it, but not all of it. What's your role, basically? Well, you know, you got a guy sitting beside you here that uh, is a tremendous ambassador and leader and, and uh, has really picked up the ball for the Flyers organization along with Comcast and run with it. And he's got so many things up in the air there. And it's all about giving back to where we, we, we are, giving back to our community, giving back to people in, in need, giving back to companies who use some stuff. And it's, it's a joint effort between the Flyers alumni and Comcast uh, going out and, and getting involved in the community, giving back to the community, uh, rescuing dogs, animals, whatever. It's, it's, it's what we do is give back. And I think that's what, what the legacy would want to be is you want to be part of that giving back to that and get, getting the current flyers, anybody that's on board, you know, to buy into it. Well, when you talk about community, Brad and I have been through this a few times. You talk about the community of Philadelphia. You're not a, an American <laughs> citizen. Uh, I'm sure you got a green card, but... I'm an you, American, man. Give you're an American now? Yeah, I became an American about 10 oh. years ago. Yeah, come on. You gotta, Salute. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I stand corrected. Yeah. But before that, you lived in Philly long before that. Yeah. Uh, this is... Fred Sherrill once said, win today and walk together forever. Well, you won today. And you are walking together forever. A lot of flyers still in Philadelphia. Um, you could have gone back to Canada. Obviously, you can live anywhere you want to. What about Philly kept you here? Well, number one, they wouldn't let me back into Canada. So <laughs> <coughs> that was kind of a shut door right away. But no, I just, uh, you know, I started down here. You, you know, you put your kid in school. It's a, we had great school systems here in, in South Jersey, Philadelphia, and uh, just kind of grew up here. And I said, when I walked away from the Capitals, asked to walk away from the Capitals. Um, I got into business and it just perpetuated from there. So I just, you know, I've done a lot of different things. I've had a lot of, a lot of fun over the years. You know, nobody owes me anything. It, it's, it's, it's a great. I mean, I've had an absolute blast here, and I have no regrets. Do you guys ever play against each other, Brad? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I started in '78 when Hound was in full swing with the Flyers, and then we played against. Uh, I played against them obviously with the Washington Capitals. And the one thing too that, uh, as they started disbanding the Broad Street Bullies. Um, there's not many players that were successful when they went to other teams. And we'll, that's a whole different story. Uh, Hound Dog here, he was one of the few 
flyer uh, Broad Street Bullies that had success for another team. 26 uh, goals. Yes, and, and he played hard in Washington. He scored goals in Washington. And he took that same attitude that he had in Philadelphia to the Washington Capitals. Not a lot of guys did that, but he was very successful away from the black and orange and the Broad Street Bullies playing for the mighty Washington Capitals. There we are. <laughs> Who was your centerman there? Dennis Murrow? Dennis Murrow, Pee Wee. Pee Wee. Which he I, scored 60 goals in the season, Caps yeah, team record. Yeah, I played yeah. I played junior hockey with uh, with Denny Marook, and it's amazing to play with the natural goal scorers. Like they do nothing, they do nothing. Then you look at the score sheet; they got two goals and an assist. Like, before we're how gonna the take heck a, did that happen? We're gonna take a break here, but we, just for a second, what do you think about Ovechkin's 800? We talked about that with Keith Primo last week. Amazing accomplishment. You think he's gonna break Gretzky's record? I hope not. Really? I can't stand the guy because. Because if you, you look at his career, yes, he's talented, and yes, he scored a lot of goals. He's won one trophy. He never won anything at junior. He never won anything in the Olympics. He never won anything in the World Championships. He has no comparison to Sidney Crosby, none whatsoever. Who has he made better on the Washington Capitals all the years that he's played? He's good. His wingers aren't that good. Crosby makes everybody better around him. Wayne Gretzky made everybody better. I could have scored 30 goals playing on Wayne Gretzky. <coughs> look at Dave, Dave Semenko. at a boy, Hound. Look at Dave. Look at Wayne Gretzky's <laughs> line mates. It was Gretzky and Curry. Gretzky and whoever. It was a, a, a they, used, they used to say Gretzky would take shots that the, the, the Lou Nolan of Edmonton, whoever that is, would say goal scored by number 28, Bob Smith. Bob Smith wouldn't even know he scored. Gretzky said it back to off your stick. That kind of thing, right? Yeah. Anyhow, yes. Don't get me wrong. He, he's a very good hockey player. I don't. I hope he doesn't uh, break Gordy Howe's record because, to me, Gordy Howe's special. Not Gordy Howe, Wayne Gretzky. I'm sorry. I already broke Gordy Howe. Yep. I, mean, I was talking to to Mark Howe, who was getting ready. We we saw Howe at an event last week, and of course they wanted uh, Mark and Marty to. And Mark, I think he's going this week or something, or maybe he already been there. But anyhow, they wanted the Howe boys there when he broke the record. And, wow. uh, so anyhow. All right, we're going to take a quick break. This is a lot of fun, everybody. Christmas time. Hope everybody's doing their shopping. Beautiful campus at Rowan. Here are the beautiful chickens and peas. This is on the ice. Independence Blue Cross with uh, plenty of stuff going on. Uh, live from Chickies and Peas right here in Glassboro on WBCB. Time now for the Independence Blue Cross Live Fearless Player of the Week. Each week we reward a flyer with this honor. This week it's Travis Konechny. Two goals last night versus Columbus, including his first shorty in the NHL. Remember to choose Independence Blue Cross today and begin to live fearless. We're going to live fearless with Brad Morris and Bob Kelly right after this. Stay with us. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's. Our seasonal menu items are now available at all Chickies and Pete's locations. Enjoy our bomb pork belly tacos or share a plate of South Philly crab fries featuring our world-famous crab fry cheese sauce. Top with porchetta style pork belly, fried onions, and shaved provolone. Don't miss our specialty cocktails like the stateside mint chocotini or cranberry margarita. Pick up some Chickie and Pete's gift cards. The perfect gift for everyone on your holiday list. Chickies and Pete's. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or a dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. Payroll Service Solutions was established in 2001 to cater to the payroll needs of small to medium-sized businesses. Payroll Service Solutions offers unparalleled customer service while they deliver a complete and accurate payroll. When calling Payroll Service Solutions, you will never be put into a voicemail or go through a series of prompts to get to a person. 
All customer service representatives are extensively trained to handle all of your payroll needs, therefore saving you time. They value each and every one of their clients. No account is too small. Call Payroll Service Solutions today at 1-866-PAY-EASY for a no-obligation review of your payroll needs. That number again is 1-866-PAY-EASY. Payroll Service Solutions. If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Seafood. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and former flyer Brad Marsh. And welcome back to On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross from the beautiful Chickies here in Glassboro, New Jersey on the campus of Rowan University, a lot of fans here, people coming up to Bob and Brad having a great time this holiday season. Time now for the Smart Stat of the Week, brought to you by Payroll Service Solutions. Call them today at one pay easy That is one pay easy In this season of rebuilding, whatever you want to call it for the Flyers, one bright spot has certainly been Carter Hart, who has a winning record at 10-9-6 and on the season. Let's hope that continues into the new year. That was your Flyers Smart Stat of the Week, again brought to you by Payroll Service Solutions. Call them today at one eight six six pay easy for the smart choice in payroll services. Payroll Service Solutions, catering to the small and medium-sized business to handle all of your payroll needs. Call them once again at one eight six six pay easy And guys, nobody can say, I mean, Carter Hart obviously started the season on a major roll. Hasn't been able to keep that up. You can't win every game for your team, but hell of a goalie. Looks like the Flyers goalie problem, Bob, is over. And, uh, and Carter is, is getting entrenched and playing some real gut hockey consistently night to night. <coughs> Yeah, he's, uh, he's, I think he's really stepped up. I mean, he's, he's been taking care of himself. He's really been training hard. And, uh, you know, he, he just needed to, you know, some, build that confidence back up. And when, unfortunately, the defenseman that we had out there, you know, some stretches there, I mean, they weren't helping him out in front. So he, he had the whole load on him. And, uh, you know, you get, you get scattered. You're at a young age. You're trying to build that confidence within yourself, you know, going out there with that positive attitude all the time. And I think he's done a really good job coming back here. And, the guys are playing better. We got some injured guys back, so everybody's dropping back, trying to help out a little bit. So I think it's good. Got some injured guys back, but got some injured guys not back. Also, this team has been overwhelmed by injuries in John Tortorella's first year. Cam Atkinson now is having surgery out for the year. Cam, I mean, uh, Sean Couturier, second back surgery. When he'll be back, March, who knows? Ryan Ellis down for the year. Will he ever play again? Who knows? Uh, Brad, obviously, all teams have injuries, but the run of luck the Flyers have had. Is unbelievable, isn't it? it? It it's hard to believe, and uh, I, I don't know. When I, I hear all the, the news of of Ryan Ellis and, and now Cam, and I started, I I can't really remember. I'd have to really scratch my head and maybe look at some old yearbooks, but I, I can't remember devastating news like that. All the teams that I played on, that said player was out for a year. You know, you get injuries. Oh, you you do this, you do that. But he's out for a year, and then another one's out for a year. And, and it's just, it's hard to wrap your head around. Like, I don't know what's going on, but, and the thing is, is, yeah, we have a lot of injuries, but there's other teams, like Columbus last night. Yeah. They had a minor league team, for heaven's sakes. Yep. And not to take away from our win, but they've had a lot of injuries, and you go throughout the league, there's so many players that are having uh, year ending injuries. I don't get it. Bob, is there any difference between, I mean, you, we all watch Sports Center or whatever, highlight shows, and, <clears throat> No autopsy, no miss a game. Guys breaks his neck, has the thousand stitches, gets sewed up. He's back for the second period. Has hockey changed in that regard, or are the Flyers just having some real bad luck this year? I think, but well, like, every team, not just the Flyers. Yeah, like Brad just said there. Yeah. I mean, so many teams have a list of a lot of guys, you know, star guys that are out, and I don't know whether it goes back to, to whether now because everything else. I mean, the skates changed, the equipment's all changed, the game's faster, the players are more skilled than what we were back in the day. 
But for some reason, I mean, are they training too hard? I mean, you know, we're trying to draft bigger bodies, but they may not be available. They can go out and play. We really don't know what these kids can do until they start getting some ice time under them. So going to the, going to the Phantoms first and getting started, Lappy's doing a good job trying to prep them, you know, what, what's going to be up top. And kids get a chance to step in and see. I mean, Torch really doesn't have an opportunity yet to really say this guy's staying that guy is not going to be here this is good what's wrong I mean he's still evaluating what the talent is and what's what's the ceiling of somebody coming in like that that young you are a savant <clears throat> because you just anticipated my next question perfectly you guys both work for the Flyers John Tortorella very demanding coach uh, he has a history of that nothing wrong with that I love John Tortorella I think he's perfect for this team he has the rare problem of being a very good coach on a team with not enough talent and a lot of that talent's injured, simple as that. A lot of what John Torrell has done in his previous stops is wait and evaluate a team the first year, see who should stay and who should go, and then proceed from there. For example, Kevin Hayes scratched last week. Brad, I read something that said that from a player on Twitter, never recalled seeing a team's leading scorer scratched in his entire life, a healthy scratch. How do you feel about torts, not that it's right or wrong, one way or the other? It's John Tortorella's way. How do you feel about going about that? scratching guys, doing whatever, and trying to find the right guys however long it takes. I don't have a problem with it because there's in this day and age, and even when we played, the one thing that the coach has over the players is ice time. Yep. And if you take the ice time away, then that strikes right to the core. And I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not in the dressing room. And I met, we both met John very briefly at the start of the year. So, yeah. Uh, I, I, is it a, is it a test? Is he seeing how he reacts and uh, and so on? And um, a lot of eyes on that situation right now. But uh, I I don't I don't have a problem with it. Uh, to me, the coach is the man. The coach is the king. The coach is the boss. And to me, he can do what he wants to motivate the team to win. Same question, Mr. Kelly. Yeah. Well, we have guys in the media that all they want to do is stir up crap. And I can tell you right now that Torts, Torts isn't about crap. He's not about that. He, he's there to coach. He's there to see what he has. He's not interested in what the dumb question is that uh, people are asking him and firing up out there. He wants to see what he has. And like Brad said, he's got the final say. Limit your ice time. You're sitting on the bench. I mean, I'd sooner be scratched than sitting on the bench getting one shift a period, sitting there looking like a dummy for 40 minutes. The guy would do a lot. Yes, he can score without question, but... <coughs> In the minus category, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of you know on the ice when goals are scored against, and that's you know you got to play you got to play both ends hard. And Kevin Hayes responded, played pretty well last night. Anybody, as Brad said, would respond. You have something taken away that you like. All of our parents have done it. We all have been through that situation in life, and it's part of the, the goal of getting to the right place. Whether you want to call it retooling, rebuilding. Whatever the word is you happen to favor, Brad. Trust the process. Trust the process. What a, what a load of crap that was. <laughs> Everything's a process. I mean, whether, whether we uh, give it the nickname or not, I mean, is doing a good job at whatever he's doing, but clearly the Flyers are rebuilding this year. Yeah. What do you, if you give it a word, what do you call it if you don't? What are the Flyers going through this year? If a fan said, what's the Flyers' goal this year, other than to win every game, obviously, what, what would you tell them? I don't know, and <clears throat> I, I understand what the word rebuild means. Uh, does retool mean the same thing, or is it the Never same know. thing in disguise? Could you know be. what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, but you, you got to take a step back and, and really be realistic at what we have right now. For whatever reason, some of our draft picks over the last number of years haven't developed or haven't matured. Whose fault that is? I don't know. Maybe um, we kept, kept Claude Giroux too long and so a young kid wasn't able to flourish. I don't know, but they have to, we have a building block. You mentioned Carter Hart and Hound talked about him. Okay, we, we look like we're solid in the net and uh, so let's move forward. Let's shore up. Delangio looks like he's the real deal. He's played pretty good for us and uh, then just start adding the pieces uh, to retool your lineup. That's the Hound, I mean, uh, <laughs> It's a slow process. Fans want to be great yesterday. They want the cup yesterday. I can't blame anybody for that. Fans everywhere are the same. We know how passionate Flyer fans are, but somebody came up to you. I'm sure you had this happen. Said, when can we realistically expect a, uh, a run at the cup? What would you tell them? Well, 
if if we could luck out and, and back into them or at least get a shot in the playoffs, it would be really good. I mean, I think that's the goal is to make the playoffs, and then you, then you just scratch and claw from there, depending who you're up against, who's healthy, who's not healthy, how well everybody's playing. But, you know, the, the, the message doesn't change any. You've got to go out there united. You've got to go out there and work together. you all got to play for the same goal. And like you said, it's, gonna, it's just going to take time because we just don't have the horses in the stable right now. But I'll tell you what. The rink last night was fired up in there. It's been fired up. The people coming in, I mean, they're going because these guys are working their tails yes, off. They are. We're getting first in the corner. Zach McEwen's doing a great job out there. You know, the defense is standing up. There's his Laurier's there. He's knocking guys down. He should be Rasmussen there. He's doing some stuff, pushing guys around. I mean, you know, I. I the What's Angelos? his name again? I, <laughs> Rasm- <that>? I can't. <laughs> The Swede. How about the Swede, eh? Oh, he's Finn. He's a Finn. He's hey, a Finn. Finn, he's a Finn. Swede, whatever the heck Risto, they are. Yeah. Know. Scandinavia, right? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. you know, I think that the, the guys are trying to play well, but they don't know their own talent, what's coming out yet. They're still developing, you know, which is, you know, we don't have people that have been seasoned down there. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of people say about the Sixers, they got the talent. I'm not sure they have the work ethic. Kind of the reverse about the Flyers. I like the way the Flyers are building. I mean, it's going to be slow. It is what it is, but... Last night, they did the job, and hopefully do the job in the future. We're going to examine a bunch of things with Brad and Bob, two of my favorite people in the world here on the ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross at Chickies and Pete's in Glassboro. Come on up, say hi. We're back with On the Ice right after this. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's. Yeah, yeah. This holiday season, the Feast of the Seven Fishes has never been easier than with the help of Chickies and Pete's to go catering. All your favorites, riverboat clams, mussels, lobster tails, calamari, and more. Same day pickup available on all orders placed before 4 p.m. Treat your family to an amazing feast of the seven fishes without the stress, hassle, and time to put all that together. From our table to yours, chickies and peas. Ho, ho. At Independence Blue Cross, we believe in giving you the tools you need to pursue your healthiest life. From premiums as low as $0 per month to health discounts and cash rewards, it pays to have coverage with Independence. With the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free 24-7 virtual doctor visits, you can feel confident that quality care is always within reach. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. Payroll Service Solutions was established in 2001 to cater to the payroll needs of small to medium-sized businesses. Payroll Service Solutions offers unparalleled customer service while they deliver a complete and accurate payroll. When calling Payroll Service Solutions, you will never be put into a voicemail or go through a series of prompts to get to a person. All customer service representatives are extensively trained to handle all of your payroll needs, therefore saving you time. They value each and every one of their clients. No account is too small. Call Payroll Service Solutions today at 1-866-PAY-EASY for a no-obligation review of your payroll needs. That number again is 1-866-PAY-EASY. Payroll Service Solutions. If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Seafood. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and former flyer Brad Marsh. 
All righty, back here with On the Ice at Cheekies and Pete's. Our guest last week, Wade Allison, back on the ice with the Flyers last night. Beautiful 5-3 win over a depleted Columbus team, but listen, I never played a game of professional sports. Wish I would have. I wasn't good enough, period. Uh, Brad and, and Bob were plenty good enough. And everybody in pro sports always says, you hear people interviewed after a game, and people think that's ridiculous, it's cliche, but from the people I've talked to, and I've talked to a lot of them, it's not cliche. It's hard to win a game in professional sports in whatever league you're talking about. Flyers winning last night, Bob. Hell of a win, and uh, you got to be proud of it. And it's a sign of the team going forward a little bit, isn't it? Well, there's only one goal, and that's to win. That's why you're being paid, and that's why you play the sport. You want to be the best you can be. And to do that, you have to go out and compete all the time. And when you lose one or two players or key players are out there, it really you know, decimates your team. But... You know, the goal is to go out there and win. There's not, there's, if you don't win, then you, you, you failed. So, I mean. How much of that's Mr. Snyder driven and how much of that is, that's what life is all about? Well, when I broke in, there was only 12 teams. And uh, I, had the, I had the good fortune to play against the original six teams that never really kind of get enough, I feel, in like in today's world, and not a lot of guys know much about the original six teams. Those guys played through all kinds of injuries and stuff, a lot different. No, nobody had sticks. The equipment was different. We didn't have the padding that that these guys have. Nobody had sticks? Had nice hockey sticks, not what they have oh. here today. <laughs> but, you know, the, the game has changed so much, but th those guys really, really, you know, worked hard out there and did things, and, um, you know, you, you prepared yourself mentally to go out there and win every game. There was no, there was no coming in, we'll, we lose, we lose, I'll forget it, we'll go on to the next one. There's, that was never part of the DNA. The DNA is you go out there to win. Brad, you coach the Warriors. We, we give you plaudits <clears throat> for that on every show. God help you and then bless your work for dealing with these wonderful ex, ex military people. They're not playing a professional sport, obviously. They're playing for the love of the game, the recreation, I'm sure a million other reasons. Do you tell your Warriors the same thing about winning and losing? If, as long as you're playing whatever, however, you might as well win, right? It's all about winning. The beer tastes better after you win. <laughs> and uh, no, with the, with the Warriors, uh, we, we have a great program and, you know, we're. We're very upfront with them. Rob Bear helps me out with that, and we're very upfront with them. And uh, our goal is to prepare them so they have the best chance to win. And uh, uh, but when we, when the referee drops the puck, uh, we're in it to win it. Yeah. Simple as that. And you, you know, Jolly, just to, to touch on that a little bit too. You always wonder what Mike Keenan's like in the after afterlife and all that stuff like that. Well, Brad Marsh is carrying on that torch because he is a reincarnation of Mike yep. Keenan behind the bench. He <laughs> bag skates him out there. He whips the crap out of him and skates him like crazy. He's a really good coach out there for, for those guys because they need the discipline that he inflicts on them. I mean, you're going to think I'm an idiot or yeah. cliche filled, but you probably do already, but I've known you for about three or four years. We're not close friends off the ice. I mean, I, I, we've seen each other, but I've never seen you smile like you were, like you did when Bob just said that. The Warriors really touches your heart, doesn't it? Well, it's it's a it's a wonderful group, and it, and it, it came up about in, in very very a simple way. And the Flyers, once again, we do so many things in the community, but our first function, we had to learn to skate for veterans. And but on that same day, December second, the Flyers were out in four different areas in the community. We had a group go to. Uh, to uh, the power play, which is the wheelchair athletes, and we had a group go to uh, go to a food bank, and we had a group. Um, I forget where everybody went. We went. I, I went to the military, and, right. and from there, uh, <clears throat> from that simple learn to play, uh, it grew in. It grew into the warrior program. And as I say to the guys all the time, if if they're a bunch of, uh, if they were bad people and they didn't appreciate what. Hound comes out a lot of times, and, and a lot of alumni come out. They didn't appreciate that, and they were, and they and, and they took it for granted, and, and so on and so on. The program wouldn't have grown. You know, the program grew. Yes, I'm standing behind the bench blowing the whistle, but the program grew because they accepted the opportunity. Well, it's an amazing thing, and and then Flyers are known for that, Bob. I was reading today, as I prepared. I believe in the John Wooden philosophy: failing to prepare is preparing to fail. You got to prepare like you did for every game, like Brad does for coaching, for being the alumni director and the like. And uh, what is it like? Flyers have everybody in the community in Christmas time. Everybody has a specific charitable role 
as a member of the community. What's that like when the players go out and touch the community in, in, in so many different ways? That's got to warm your heart and everybody connected with the Flyers, doesn't it? Well, I had uh, a few years ago, no, probably about eight, nine years ago, I had the, uh, the opportunity to go out and uh, go present a jersey to somebody who was 104 years old. Wow. Really, really nice gentleman, 104 years old. A week later, I went out and I did a lady who was 103 years old. Seriously, I went we in got, there. We got video of it. They, it's great. And they had cakes and they had cakes and the gifts and all that. It was awesome to go in there and present that, sit down and share a little bit of time with each other back and forth. And I'm going like two different places. I wonder if I can get the two of you together because <laughs> there's nobody living really in your, in your... They were really spry for their age, so it was good. But every day we go out and do something and thanks to Brad's leadership, uh, the alumni bought into it, the current guys are involved and stuff like that. So... Uh, we're out there a lot, and with the Flyers uh, charities uh, all over the place. We're, 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 just, we're back way busier than we ever were before. And that's well, the mark of a good Our game. alumni has, uh, well, we do a lot, as you know, but one of the Christmas campaigns, we have a 12 days of Christmas giving, uh, where 12 days leading up to Christmas, we give uh, monies or uh, a gift or something. How about giving uh, me some talent? Would that be good? No. <laughs> uh, to, to local and smaller uh, charities that, you know, we're going to let someone else cure cancer, but we're there, we're going to help, uh, help uh, the smaller charities, and it's been wonderful. Like, you know, we were up at a therapeutic, therapeutic horse ranch uh, uh, last week, and we made a donation to them. We made a donation last night, me and Hound, to Zach McHugh, and he has a wonderful foundation up in PEI, his home, his home province, uh, uh, the, the, my, my biggest fan foundation. It's named after his dad who passed away, and they help kids play hockey. And so, you know, we give away about $50,000 at Christmas time through that 12 days of Christmas giving. It's wonderful to, to be able to help people. It really is. It's wonderful to be in a city where people care so much, the fans care so much, the players care so much. But obviously, it's all about their professional team. It's about winning, and John Tortorella doesn't miss any words. He doesn't miss words about anything. Um, he starts with defense, Brad, which you played. Uh, the number one pairing, Ivan Provorov, and that Finnish guy, Rasmus Ristolainen. Uh, <laughs> Someone in Scandinavia. Sweet check, whatever. There we are. <laughs> Brought up Cam York recently. How do you feel like, I mean, obviously Ryan Ellis gone for the year. Travis Sandheim, we can name the defenseman, but no point to that really. Do you feel, do you, do you feel hockey starts on the defensive end and goes out from there? Forwards are just dumb defensemen. <laughs> and that's what Can't we tell. backwards, uh, yeah. right? No. Well, the thing is, is... You know, it's the catch-22. If you can't get the puck out of your end, you're not going to win many hockey games. No. But on the flip side, if you can't score goals, you're not going to win many hockey games. But um, it, it start, I don't want to say it starts with defensemen, but it starts with a defenseman that can make the first pass. And that's the key is the defenseman can make the first pass. The breakout. To, the breakout to give you the opportunity to get out of, uh, out of your end. Well, for someone that's not just listening, that's not familiar that, people see a guy go behind the net, and you start up the ice a million times a game. That's what coaches spend more time on practice, I think, than anything else. Um, Simple breakouts. Yeah. How many different kinds? I mean, obviously, there's a million different <coughs> kinds, but how many did you guys use? How many do you teach for the Warriors? And, again, how important is getting the puck out and getting to the forwards? Well, I, I really think, like, you always hear all the systems and the systems and the systems. Hockey is one of the few sports that doesn't necessarily re rely on systems. Like football, every play starts fresh. Quarterback goes Omaha, 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 <laughs> and then he hands the ball off to somebody, and then they do a set play. There we are. Baseball, a pitcher throws it to the catcher, and the, base, and the batter swings if he chooses to. It's a new play. It's a set play. Basketball, you got the, the same guy carrying up, and he's doing one, two, three, one, two, dribbling the ball. Yep. Hockey, and I always use this as an example, if Mark Howe is behind the net, there's so many different combinations that he can do. Brad Marsh is behind the net, off the glass and out, off the glass and out. And I, it, in a work, kept me in the league for 15 years. And the thing, I, I really think in hockey, the system's word is overrated because hockey, un, we're in a game of reaction. If you stop and think, the play's over. A lot of people say, Bobby, you don't want to think in professional sports. Not that everybody's a dummy that plays, but it really is a reaction game for, for the athletes, isn't it? Well, you know, I didn't have that much pressure on me because uh, we were in the island for an important face-off in our end zone. Joe Watson's there on the ice. And uh, anyway, she skates over to Eddie, 
his partner, and he says, whatever you do, don't give the, pound, the puck to the hound. He'll lose it. So uh, <laughs> they didn't use me and incorporate me in a lot of plays out there, but I had fun. Uh, I, I mean, we could listen to stories for hours and hours and hours, just Bob Kelly telling stories of the Broad Street Bully, Brad Marsh, plenty of those as well. Uh, it's it's never-ending. When we come back, there's a guy that left the Flyers this week, Lucas Sedlak, who wasn't a big part of the team, but left, and John Tortorella didn't seem to have much problem with it. The, the professional sports and what they mean and what goes into it, we'll, we'll examine that with Lucas Sedlak when we come back with Bob Kelly and Brad Marsh on the ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Final segment coming up. Be back here. The last thing I remember, I was outside Chickie and Pete's. Of course, George. Chickie and Pete's is Philadelphia's most decorated and award-winning restaurant. I give each of the kids a Chickie and Pete's gift card. It's the gift that always fits. It's almost as good as getting your wings. Yeah, that's right, Clarence. You can get your wings at Chickie's and crab fries and lobster pizza and a hot beef sandwich. You see, George, it really is a wonderful place, this Chickie and Pete's. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. Payroll Service Solutions was established in 2001 to cater to the payroll needs of small to medium-sized businesses. Payroll Service Solutions offers unparalleled customer service while they deliver a complete and accurate payroll. When calling Payroll Service Solutions, you will never be put into a voicemail or go through a series of prompts to get to a person. All customer service representatives are extensively trained to handle all of your payroll needs, therefore saving you time. They value each and every one of their clients. No account is too small. Call Payroll Service Solutions today at 1-866-PAY-EASY for a no-obligation review of your payroll needs. That number again is 1-866-PAY-EASY. Payroll Service Solutions. If you are looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Prime Seafood. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for On the Ice, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and former flyer Brad Marsh. All right, folks, by the way, if you uh, have a flyer schedule nearby, if you look on the internet, flyers are now playing in Buffalo January 9th. Why? You can read it on the internet. There's the game got canceled with Tampa Bay and Buffalo and somehow the Flyers, whatever. January 9th, the Flyers play Buffalo. I always say, yell at the people who do the schedule. They'll say, do it yourself. And you say, no, that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll let you do it. So the Flyers play January 9th in Buffalo. Brad Marsh, the uh, juniors are starting to play at the World Juniors, uh, which is paid attention to by, I know, all of Canada. Many people around the world, you played in it twice. I pointed out that I was a junior in high school and a junior in college. Never quite played in anything, but uh, tell us about the World Juniors and how much people up north pay attention to this. 
Yeah, it gets uh, like it's like Super Bowl ratings up in Canada when the World Juniors go on. They t- really? traditionally start on uh, Boxing Day, and they just scored. We got it on the TV here. We don't have a Boxing Day here, so that's the day after Christmas. The, the 26th, yeah. yes. And uh, I was fortunate enough to play twice. Uh, the first time was uh, uh, the championships were in Czechoslovakia when it was the, the was when that was a country. Uh, when that was the country, <laughs> and. Uh, Got a silver medal. Then the following year, it was in Montreal, and uh, got a bronze medal. And uh, so it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And uh, so I, I always keep an eye. I always watch it because it's, it's great hockey. It's fun hockey. And uh, it's uh, really neat to see the kids from all the nations uh, competing. I hate to ask you this, song because we love you as a guest. But when you were a junior, did the World Juniors exist? Um, yeah, I think they're around. <laughs> well, what it was, what, what, what it was back in Hounds Day, and when I when I went over in 1976, 77, uh, what it was, it wasn't a national team. Uh, uh, they rotated through the Quebec League, Ontario League, and the Western League, and the team that was in first place, at December one, that team then went and represented wow. Canada in the con- in, in the World World Junior Championship. Mm-hmm. So when I went over, uh, I went over as a team, then the following year, 1978, that was the first year that it was an all-star team from all of Canada, and it was Wayne Gretzky's uh, sure. first year in the juniors, and he was the star of the World Junior Championship as a 16 year If you like hockey, you might as well watch the World Juniors. The guys that get drafted at the top of the draft, Connor Bedard and this year and everybody else, yeah. USA's got a good team. Um, the Flyers don't have a great team right now, and Scott Lawton was asked about the other day, a guy that we love, been a guest in this show many times. He said, yeah, frustration is starting to creep in. Both you guys were with teams that, that weren't very good. I wasn't with any teams that weren't very good. That's one thing I have over you, but I wasn't with any teams that were very good either. But how hard is it, Bob, when, when you're with a bad team, you know you're not very good, how hard is it to keep playing your best and not get frustrated because human nature is what it is? Well, I think that's, it's up to the rest of the teammates that are in there is to make sure that everybody stays positive, everybody stays focused, everybody knows what the common goal is. I mean, we're being paid by the National Hockey League, our Flyers. You're paid to go out there and do a job. So you've got to put your best foot forward. You know, every game you're going out there and believe that you can win. And when you get a setback, then that's when your teammates can come. They can help you out a little bit, you know, give you some pointers out there. Maybe you're just doing something that's really easy to fix and then gets you back in the groove out there. But it's just it's, it's the focus and the discipline to be the best that you can be anytime you step on the ice. How did you feel when you were playing with a bad team, had to go out, wake up, go out, know you're going to get your brains beat in? How, how hard is that? Well, this is where the coaching staff will come in to keep the players motivated. Uh, my last year was Ottawa Centre's first year in the league, 92-93. And uh, the expansion, they were an expansion team. That The rules were not the same as they are now for that expansion franchise. And no Vegas is back then, huh? Yeah, exactly. And so uh, we were bad, but... We worked hard, but we knew we weren't any good. Uh, we knew we didn't have the talent to go out and win in the National Hockey League. But we had, as Hound said, we were a good team in the dressing room. We were a good team in practice, and we stayed together. But, you know, for those of you that are good at math, uh, you know, we played 82 games. That's 164 total points that a team can earn in the National Hockey League. Yep. We, as the uh, expansion Ottawa Senators, had 21 points. Worst team ever in hockey. 21 points out wow. of 164. I don't know what the winning percentage is, but it's not very Caps good. Caps first year. I'm from Washington. Bob played with the Caps. Caps won eight games their first year. We won One nine. Run. Wow. We won I guess nine they tied games. a couple more games than you guys Yeah, did. we had three three ties. Wow. Nine wins, three ties. That, that is unbelievable. It was a still, long year, man. That was a it's long still etched in your mind, too. You just don't <laughs> ever forget that. Was. That's right. You don't. Well, and it was a miserable year, but the dressing room was one of the best teams that I played on. That's an awesome thing to obviously not reach the goals you have, but sometimes you reach the human goals, and that can be uh, incredible instead. Bob Kelly's Broad Street Bullies obviously won two Stanley Cups. Adulation, Stars, Bernie, Bob, Bill Barber, many of them. Um, I get asked all the time about Broad Street Bully stories. Last time I checked, I wasn't a member of the Broad Street Bullies. Any stories, Bob, in any way, shape, or form that people might enjoy stand out? Just something people might get a chuckle about this holiday season? Well, you know what? We, we travel again. We, we are probably uh, some of the worst prankers going out there. I mean, we'd always prank because, you know, we didn't fly on a chart like the guys fly today. We flew in the back end of the airplane, and, 
I mean, the whole thing was number one. You, what, what number one is you, what's that? Why didn't you just beat the hell out of the passengers in first class and go up there? <laughs> no, it didn't work that way back in the day. <laughs> but just, you know, you didn't dare fall asleep because guys would sneak over and cut your tie or they cut your pants or cut your laces. And it, it's all about pranking each other and having fun. I mean, you know, there's lots of stories out there. Bernie brought his, uh, one of his flutes on the, on the airplane one time and started Saxophone, playing. wasn't it? Saxophone, saxophone. Yeah. Bernie Sorry. plays a saxophone? Uh, he's, well, he carried one. He carried <laughs> But it was all about pranking each other, having fun, because, you know, you find ways to, to loosen the team up, loosen your teammates up, and have some fun out there. And, uh, you know, we just had a lot of fun. I mean, absolutely zero regrets about anything around the game. That sounds like great. I mean, you're paid to play a kid's game. You enjoy doing it. Oh. And if you have fun off the ice, really, what, what's better in life, right? Yeah. And, you know, when you're, when you're chirping guys from the bench and, and the guys are skating by you and you're getting them mad at you. I mean, we're already hated, so just, you know, help add a little bit more to the fire. How much does that image carry with you to this day? I mean, you go anywhere, you go anywhere in the world. If you tell someone, I was a member of the Broad Street Bullies, if they know anything about hockey, that statement says all, it all. What's it like to be on the other end of that and, uh, and carry that torch for everybody that, that you're with? I think every, you know, we had an identity. We had to, the Flyers had to establish an identity because the St. Louis Blues used to just pummel them for two years in a row. So that's why they, they constructed the bullies to go out there. And not bullies, but just go out there and play hard, tough hockey. And there's a lot of guys on both sides uh, can, can play. Any given night, you know, it's not a good night for you. Brad, there's going to be more good nights ahead. John Tortorella is a tremendous coach. Um, obviously, there's no way to, to say this. This isn't science. Um, there's opinions and everything, which is why sports are great. What's your opinion? You work with the Flyers, you watch this team play, you see the talent, you see the injuries, you see Tortorella, put it all in the blender and tell a, tell a fan, when do you think the Flyers can realistically contend, whatever that means to you? Oh, man, that's hard, <clears throat> that's hard to say when we are going to be a contender. Uh, but I think we'll all agree we watched the Flyers play the last two seasons. A lot of times you left the Wells Fargo Center with a bad taste in your mouth. This season, yes, we're not winning as much as we'd like, but you don't leave the Wells Fargo Center with that same bad taste in your mouth. Because the, the guys are working. The guys are, 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 are executing. Um, they just can't find the back of the net a lot of the times. Um, so I have a good vibe about the direction of this team. When it's going to be a contender, I don't know. Uh, we'll see with the draft. Hopefully we get the draft right. And you know what, too, is not to hound on, on a mistake number two pick. If we pick Kale McCarr, we're, this conversation is totally different. If I mean, Kale McCarr is on our blue line. Not only is Kale McCarr on your blue line, but the guy you did pick number two, Nolan Patrick, if you believe what a lot of people say, he's not playing this year for Vegas because of another injury. Is his career over? I mean, if his career is over and Kel McCarr wins 11 Norrises and 12 Cups, one mistake, Bobby, can resonate forever, can it? Yeah, well, those are all decisions made by people a lot higher than we are and stuff yeah. like that. And, and you know, you, oh, and there's you, all you kinds you, of stories of missed picks and wrong yeah, picks. Yeah, you stuff. don't have them. It's not happening, so move on. You, you got no choice. You can't sit there and dwell on it. Well, he went here, he went there. You, you didn't get the pick. You didn't get what's in there. So is that a scouting problem? Is that a managerial decision? I mean, there's a lot of things that factor in. There are a lot of things that factor in. I wish we had more time to talk about all of them, but Flyers are what they are. They're fun to watch, as you guys said. Tortorella's doing a hell of a job. Guys are playing hard, and that's all you can ask when you go into a bu building. One, one last thing, Bobby. They have done a hell of a job refurbishing that Wells Fargo Center. Unbelievable. They have. It, you know, it starts from the top down, and Dave Scott and Comcast and Valerie there, they've done an outstanding job, you know, putting resources back into the building to give us what we have today. More expansion, more more uh, renovations are going to be going on lower lower down in the event level and that. And, you know, they've given us all the tools that we need. It's been really, really good. All right, guys, we've got about 10 seconds for each of you, but it's holiday season. Give your uh, holiday greetings in 10 seconds if you can. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. Mr. Kelly? Schweier Noel Ibanio Ruzini. There we are, whatever that was. I'm, <laughs> some language that I'm not sure because I do speak French. Troy and Noel, I guess, might have been French. But anyway, this is, that'll wrap it up for On the Ice tonight, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Chris Sermon produced this fine program. Keith Newton back at the station. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you both. To everybody out there, Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. We'll be back next Wednesday. 
here at Chickens and Pizza in Glassboro with another edition of On the Ice presented by Independence Blue Cross for Brad Marsh and Bob Kelly. I'm Paul Jolovitz. Have a great holiday, everybody, and go Flyers. Go Flyers. You're listening to 1490 WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton, and now heard as well on 